In this video, I'm going to show you one of my favorite tools to use in the Go ecosystem. And no, it's not part of the standard library, but it really is going to make your job as a Go developer so much easier. So the tool I'm talking about is called Air by Cosm Trek on GitHub. It has about 11.7 thousand stars. It should really have a lot more, but really it's live reloading for Go apps. I'm going to show you a quick example of what exactly this solves if the name isn't apparent enough, but simply saying it just sets in the motivation. When I started developing websites in Go and using Jin framework, it was a pity that Jin lacked a live reloading function. And this is actually pretty common across a bunch of different frameworks. I know the Arthur here is talking about Jin, but this is relevant in Chi, in Mux, and a whole bunch of different Go frameworks, even just the standard library when you spin up an HTTP server. There's no hot live reloading. So if you wanted to make a change and make it obvious throughout your server, you literally have to exit out of your program, make your change, and then re-spin up your server. And that's just a pain, especially if you're gonna do something quick like logging or you miss something or print statement, or you have a typo. Live reloading makes your life easier. All right, so I'm back on the GitHub page of Air and it's a CLI tool such an easy install so here you can just see with via go install you have two methods prefer install with install.sh or via the go install command if you have go 1.18 or higher and if we flip over to our editor you can see go version we're using go 1.20.6 even though we should be using go 121 but then let's go ahead and install air at the latest version and now we can see that it is working. Obviously, we're getting an error here, failed to build Eric status because it's not finding the correct directory of our application, but we're gonna build that right now. Okay, so you can see here, I have a brand new project. There's absolutely nothing. There's just a go mod file and a main.go file. If we go into the package, we're just gonna do package main, and we're gonna do a few things. And for this demonstration, I'm gonna use the Chi framework I think it's a great framework to use for Go, for spinning up HTTP servers. The syntax and logic and the way it's written is just beautiful. So link in the description below. I took some code from Chi. This is just basic HTTP code. I mean, I literally just ripped it from their documentation. You can see here, as you go run main.go, it's not gonna say anything, but if we spin up and go back to our server, you can see here that we get a little welcome screen here. However, let's say you want to refactor this or you want to add a new route to this well let's go ahead and do that. let's add a new route that just responds with some json that says this is a healthy route http.request i'm going to do is response uh body map of string message and then the message is going to say healthy route healthy route and then we're going to do response json is going to be json dot marshall so we're going to put in the response body which we're going to do HTTP dot error. I'm going to put W and then internal server error and then HTTP internal server error. All we're going to do is do W dot write header HTTP dot status. Okay. And then W dot write response JSON. So we add a new handler and then we go back to our main routing function. Let's go add r.get, so it's gonna be a get method. It's gonna be slash test, that's the route. And we're just gonna pass in our health check handler here. Okay, cool. So now we've added it, but if we go back to our server, and if we go to localhost slash 3000 slash test, which is the name of the route we just added, 404 page not found. Well, that's pretty annoying because what we have to do instead is we actually have to tear down this server and interrupt to kill this server essentially. And then again, do go run main.go, go back, refresh. And now we finally see the healthy route JSON message. But you can see how this isn't the best developer experience. I mean, this just adds so much time. You're not iterating fast. And if I just had to quickly change this message on the route, then I'm gonna have to change it, tear it down, spin it back up. And sometimes in this example, it's fairly easy, but if you have a big server that's a load a bunch of things and you have a bunch of app client initializations, that's a pain in the ass. So instead of going again, we're gonna actually turn down our server and we're gonna use air again. And boom, it already knows that our server is running because they found the main.go file and it created a TMP folder for us. If we go back just to check, refresh, Everything's working as expected, but instead of putting healthy route, let's just say you are seeing this in 
real time reloading and you can see that it rebuilt my server and there you go you are seeing this in real time reloading without me having to actually intervene interrupt the server and spin it back up again and there's one more thing i want to talk about and that's actually a really cool usage of air when it comes to integrating it with a docker file a docker compose file very simple integration you can just put a command of air and it'll automatically spin it up so you can copy all your go logic into a docker file add an air command install it here with a run go install command and you will have air hot reloading your go code even through a docker container so i hope you all enjoyed this video let me know what you think about air is the tool that you think you'd use personally i love it i use it all the time it makes my life easier and this is kind of those videos that's going to be in a new suite where i try to find new tools in the go ecosystem built by incredible authors that can showcase to you guys and let me know is there a tool that you recommend to other go developers that you just can't live without and should i cover it in my next youtube video but as always, I got to leave you guys with two things. One, what go tool do you like? And I want to know beyond standard library, there's really cool go tools made by really smart people. So which one do you enjoy? And number two, you got to power it.